I was reviewing this top-down thermal imaging monocular last year and there's much to like about it, but I was disappointed that it doesn't give you a sense of what the actual temperature is, unlike these ones. It just shows you what is warmer or cooler. And I thought at the time that that was a really annoying software limitations, but thinking about it more since, it actually has a lot to do with how these thermal cameras actually work. And I remember seeing thermal cameras used on TV back in the 80s and they were always cooled with liquid nitrogen, which kind of makes sense because if you cool the camera a lot, then the radiation from inside the camera won't expose the center as much as what's coming in through the lens. Otherwise it's going to be all fogged up, right? So imagine a camera like this and that there was actually light sources inside the camera itself. I mean, that would totally swamp out any light that might be coming in through the lens and totally ruin the image, right? And with a thermal camera like this one, of course, the infrared heater radiates a lot. But so does everything else in the room. And the room is actually cooler than the camera is right now, so the camera is irradiating itself. And just about everything emits infrared radiation if it's a little bit warm. The only exceptions are materials that are highly reflective, like this tin foil, but then they just reflect the radiation from somewhere else. And materials that are infrared transparent, like these infrared lenses here. But they just pass on the radiation that's coming from somewhere else as well. And in a normal camera, you just make the inside black so that the sensor only receives light that comes in through the lens, not light that might be bouncing around inside. And if the sides were transparent, light would just come through from everywhere else. And if it was reflective, then all the light that's bouncing off everything else would also screw up the image. And so before cameras like this, you just cool down the entire camera so it's way colder than what you're looking at so that you're not getting a lot of radiation from inside the camera. But these don't require cooling, so how does that work? So imagine that this is a cross section of our camera and there's a bunch of light coming in from here. So we have a peak on the sensor here, another peak on the sensor. So this is how much infrared we're getting across the sensor. But of course, it's not just infrared coming in through the lens. The whole camera is irradiating itself, but it's at a relatively consistent level because it's at the same temperature. So instead of having just this much, we actually have a lot of extra infrared plus a little bit that actually came in through the lens. And so with a vast amount of infrared that hits the sensor coming from the camera itself, the key to making this work is just to have a really good sensor that is really sensitive and really low noise. And so the sensor picks up that there's this much infrared coming here with the vast majority just being baseline and a little bit of variation. And you just look at what the darkest spot is and say, okay, that is now our baseline. But we have no idea if there's actually a lot of constant infrared coming in because we're looking at something that's consistently warm or if we're looking at something that is relatively cold with just a few warmer spots. And so by making the darkest spot baseline, you have no idea how much infrared came in through the lens and how much is from inside the camera. You just have no idea what the actual baseline temperature is and this is why it's not giving you a degree. It's just meant for, you know, spotting warm animals in the wild and stuff like that. It's not an inspection camera. But even though these cameras are mostly picking up their own infrared, they're actually incredibly sensitive to small differences in temperature. So for instance, there's the pen, which I was holding, so it's a little bit warmer. But just looking at this workbench, I'll just put my hand on here briefly. And there's a handprint from how I warmed up the workbench in a fraction of a second. Or looking at the wall with this one, we can see where the studs are because they're about half a degree cooler than the rest of the wall. But then how does this one know the temperature Whereas this one doesn't. Well, with both of these, they occasionally go click click and the image that it's taking freezes for a second. And I realized that click click is essentially it's closing a shutter here so there's nothing coming in through the lens anymore. And then we basically just have the baseline from inside the camera itself. And so we can work out, okay, this much infrared is from inside the camera. So that with the shutter open, if we're seeing this, we know we have to subtract this much. And so we get a sense of how much infrared actually came in through the lens. And once you know how much infrared came in through the lens, you can use that to work out what the temperature must have been. And pretty much everything radiates infrared except for things that are very reflective. Although some things that don't appear to be that reflective, like this piece of copper, is actually almost mirror-like in the infrared band. Or this cast iron table saw top is also quite mirror-like in infrared because the thermal infrared wavelength is about 10 times longer than it is for visible light, so it doesn't need to be nearly as smooth as it needs to be for visible light to be like a mirror. And another thing that doesn't radiate infrared is infrared lenses because they just pass the infrared 
that's on the other side. And quite a lot of plastics are actually kind of translucent in infrared. So I put that here and I put the camera straight in front of it and I put my hand behind that uh, plastic bowling pin. I can still see it even though we can't see anything through the plastic invisible light. But except for metal surfaces and some plastic, pretty much everything else radiates infrared quite nicely and if it is reflective you can usually tell that there's reflections in it. So for the most part you can tell temperatures fairly well with infrared. And carbon dioxide also blocks and radiates a little bit of infrared so if there's a lot of carbon dioxide in the air that actually shows up quite well. So here's the flame and you can see the smoke coming off of it is quite visible because it's high in carbon dioxide and it's quite warm so it's emitting a lot of infrared. And because there's always a little bit of carbon dioxide in the air, if this thing was able to show the actual absolute temperatures, if you're looking at something far away, it would always be a little bit off based on the temperature of the air between you and what you're looking at. Now, I actually want to see the shutter open and close, but the window on here is completely opaque to visible light. So I'm trying to watch it with infrared, and for that I'm going to use this infrared monocular. And it's focused at far away, so it would be all fuzzy, so I'm going to use this lens to focus up close and I made a lens holder out of wood and everybody will say oh just 3D print it. I don't have a 3D printer. This didn't take that long to make. And that fits tightly into here and now I gotta focus this on the lens here. Oh I got that in focus I think just about right. So that's watching the lens in here. Come on. I think it does it more when it gets turned off and on. So let's turn it off and on again. There. And again. And again. Yeah, it's quite clickety when it's just been turned on. So given how the lens on here looked a little bit darker when it closed the shutter, that tells me the sensor in there must be a lot warmer because we actually saw the infrared coming out from the sensor. But I also thought it was really cool to use one of these to observe something completely invisible to the human eye. And the reason I used this one to observe it is because this one doesn't have the clickety shutter. So I wouldn't miss anything on account of the clicks from this one. Just watching the clicks on this one here. And I forgot to turn off recording when I was done. So I came back two hours later and it was still recording had two hours worth of infrared footage on there and hadn't even run the battery down that much so that was kind of impressive. Can't think of a use for that right now but it's cool. And this video is sponsored by Top Don, makers of various infrared cameras and the reason I made this video now is because they emailed me saying hey we've got a promotion coming up on Amazon so could you like mention that in a video and I said actually I have a video that I had been meaning to make about these cameras once I figured out how they work it was on my list of things to do and so I was like well might as well make that video now and tell you about the promotion that's happening on Amazon right now for these cameras.